Hi, my name's Luke, and welcome out to Frodo Bay, and today we have the Leica VLUX 5. Let's get into it. So the Leica VLUX 5 is very similar, and in fact you could almost say it's a twin, to the Lumix FZ1000 Mark II. Now there's a few differences, one of them being it says a Leica, just there, and it has the red badge on the other side as well. And it's done a few style designs to make it a bit more Leica-esque, shall we say. But apart from that, it is pretty much the exact same camera. So with that being said, let's just run through some of the features this camera has. So on the inside it has a 20 megapixel sensor. So on the inside it has a 20 megapixel 1 inch sensor. And it has a 25 to 400 mil zoom with an f2.8 to f4 lens inside. That's pretty impressive. Another feature that we quite like as well is the fact that you have an electronic viewfinder as well as a very angle screen. Oh how much we love a very angle screen. Now, I'm not being funny, they, they genuinely are helpful. Have you been in those low situations, high situations? I mean as a short person I've got to like look over to all people. Very angle screens, perfect. And the bonus of the lens is the fact that it has optical image stabilization so it means if you're shaky handed this is really gonna smooth out those shots. So again, another very, very helpful feature. You got an SD card in the bottom, battery in the bottom as well. It's a bit of a pain to get access to if you got it with a tripod mount, so do bear that in mind, but still very easy access. Oh, and it's a uh, price, a thousand pounds. Yeah, 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 I know the other one's cheaper, the FZ1000 Mark II, but it's a Leica. It's a Leica, so yeah. It's a Leica. Yes, you can get the exact same thing right here, the different badge on it for a bit cheaper, but it's a Leica. And the great thing about Leicas is that they hold their value. So when you go down the road of deciding, actually, I want to upgrade, you can. And when you do so, you might want to sell the previous camera. With a Leica badge, they hold their value, so it'll be worth a little bit more so it's worth kind of investing a little bit extra if you see what I mean. But again, you don't have to do that. You can just go ahead and buy the FZ1000 Mark II. No one's gonna stop you, but it's a Leica. Okay, so we'll leave the Leica and the FZ1000 Mark II there because let's just get to the camera. The camera itself is really good. As I said, you've got an articulating screen, very angle, touch screen, very handy. Also got an electronic viewfinder, again, very nice very clean picture but that's what we're going to expect nowadays with these getting better and better each year we've been through the years where they were bad we've been through the years where they were kind of overdone and now they're getting there and we actually got some decent lenses to work with in terms of the battery it's a very small battery but it will see you through most of the day we're looking about 300 shots maybe a bit more depending how you use it it only takes one SD card but again these types of bridge cameras you're never really gonna see dual card slots it's more of a pro feature not many pros buy bridge cameras. Now for the one sensor, the body is quite large. It is bigger than most mirrorless cameras and it is bigger than some of the entry level DSLRs, but it's a nice feel, it's comfortable. The little lip over by the thumb gives you a nice little grip on the back end as well. So it's not just sliding off the back because that can be quite annoying with some bridge cameras. And in terms of picture quality, incredible results. Very clean, very vibrant. You're, you've got to like a lens in there so you're not getting average quality you're getting really good Leica level technology being put into this lens to give you really crisp results from 25 all the way to 400 mil so you really can't go wrong and one of the great things about a massive zoom is you can stay in one spot you can get some lovely landscapes and then you can zoom in all the way and you can get some nice close shots so if you are into sport photography or wildlife or anything where you just want to be able to mix up and explore what you want to do and you don't want to go down the route of buying a DSLR or investing 
thousands of pounds into lenses so you can get a wide angle, uh, semi-wide and then a telephoto. You can get all of them just in one. It takes great macro photos, it takes great zoom photos, very crisp, very clean. And at 400 mil, at f4, you still get some very good background blur. So you really, again, like I said, you, you can't go wrong with a bridge camera. A bridge camera is a perfect kind of in between a compact, which is quite small, and a DSLR, so you've got that lovely good feel, the lovely hefty weight. I mean, it's not lightweight to the point you're like, ah, oh, this feels cheap. This has some good quality weight to it. You can either use a toggle here to zoom, or you can use it there, just like a DSLR, which is lovely. I mean, you've got to kind of do it a few times to, br to reel it in, but, you know, it's just part of having a Leica. So one of the other neat features is the fact that you have an electronic and a mechanical shutter. That means two things. One, you got a mechanical shutter, so you're getting the traditional way of taking a picture. But the real benefit is in the silent shutter. So if you're trying to take pictures of birds in the garden, for example, and you don't want to disturb them with a you can switch to silent, take a picture, and you don't hear a thing. But do bear in mind, when you use that, it is reading it going down the sensor. It's doing an electronic take. So when you're shooting in slightly higher ISOs, you kind of get a bit more grain. You can start seeing some artifacts from using um, that type of shutter, which is why there's still the mechanical one there, because it's a bit more reliable when it comes to taking good quality pictures. So if you're someone who is shooting landscapes or any high detail shots, best stick to mechanical, but the benefits really for the silent shutter, if you're in a quiet scene and you don't want to make any uh, noise so you're out in the garden or you're at a wedding or you know just somewhere quiet and you don't want to be seen that's when you use silent shutter and that's why it's so useful so for those of you asking yes you can shoot video you can shoot 4k up to 30 frames a second and 1080p up to 60. it also does have slow-mo up to 120 frames a second so that is ticking some serious boxes right there if you're into that sort of thing or getting slow-mo video and one of the other great benefits is the fact that you actually have a microphone jack no headphone jack, but it's a step in the right direction and we'll definitely take that on board when we're using this camera because that's a very nice thing to have. So we are currently recording this on the Leica V-Lux 5. As you can see, it's not the widest thing in the world, but the audio is not too bad. I'm just looking at myself from the screen just to see where I'm at and if I'm actually in focus, which I don't think I am. It does say continuous focus is on, but it doesn't seem to be doing the trick, which is kind of annoying. I think I'm in focus. Again, can't tell. Am I in focus? I will never know. And I guess you can't win everything. I am tapping on my face to make sure I'm in focus. Whether or not that does anything, I have no idea. So uh, let's just hope this works. But as you can see, you can do video on this. It is a bit of a faff, but it is doable. And you also have the microphone plugged in on top. Currently, you see on the video, uh, the Rode Video Micro is what I'm using on the top. This isn't straight out of the camera. However, it this, this is coming out of the camera itself. So you can see you get a bit more crispiness when you plug in the mic. Do bear that in mind. If you're looking to get this camera for video, do think about getting a mic with it as well. So if you guys liked our review on the Leica Velux 5, let us know. If there's any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, my name's Luke. This is Fudderbite, and we'll see you next time.